everyone, Sean and Kim Christopher here. Hey, how's it going? It is so good to see you all again. Quite often we are asked by potential buyers whether the owners would consider a verbal offer. Many owners prefer to avoid such offers and in fact, we confirm with all our clients prior to listing of their instructions to only deal with written offers, being those offers via the full and correct complete offer documents. Yes, indeed. And insisting on written offers isn't just to the benefit of the sellers. No, no, no. It's very much a benefit to the buyers too. So Kim, why on earth would a buyer want to make a verbal offer only in the first place? Well, it could be for a myriad of reasons, I suppose. The buyer may be looking at several homes and doesn't want to commit a written offer to only oh. one. So they're playing the field to see which home comes out the cheapest. The buyer might be lazy and simply can't be bothered sitting down with the agent to complete the offer. Yes, I can imagine that. Or look, some people may be wanting to negotiate verbally to uncover the owner's final position, only to pass that information on to the actual true buyer, who then offers under that again. Or it could simply be that the buyers had absolutely no idea of the offering process, and so it is more due to ignorance rather than any sort of gameplay. The issue with verbal offers are they have no terms and conditions and are not binding. And this is the reason verbal offers are of no benefit for either a buyer or a seller. Absolutely. And you know, at some point, the verbal offer must be formalized in a fully completed offer document with all the details of the parties, as well as terms and conditions and everything else. So Kim, what happens if one of the parties now renege and try to renegotiate. Okay, for example, a seller may be under the impression that the price agreed to verbally had no conditions, such as a building pest clause, mm. and the buyer wants that clause as protection. So now the seller insists on a higher price to include such a clause. Absolutely, or consider another scenario where the buyer replies to a seller saying, hey, I need 60 day finance clause. The seller didn't expect that and would not have even granted that or agreed to such things. But again, these details weren't discussed, were they? These scenarios illustrate why verbal offers are absolutely fraught with danger. Buyers need to consider another point. A seller will always take a buyer's offer more seriously if they've completed the appropriate offer documents. Yes. Imagine for a moment you're a seller. You've got the agent sitting in front of you across the table. They've laid out the formal offer documents. You can see this sign, dated, all the details are in there, terms, conditions, price deposit, everything. It all looks rock solid. Fantastic. Now imagine agents just ringing the seller going, hey John, I've got a guy here and he wants to offer X. What do you want to do? Which do you think would hold more value to a seller? And which offer do you think the seller would more likely negotiate seriously? Too true. Look, as a buyer, you must remember the sellers do have fears and trepidations just like buyers do. The more comfortable you can make the seller, the better they will view your offer in negotiations and may even have some leniency. That is why written offers are a must. If you make a verbal offer, the seller will always ask why. Are they not serious? And you know what? Verbal offers are far too easy to dismiss. So it's clear to see why it's in the seller and buyer's benefit to complete the appropriate form of offer documents. And we hope you found this video interesting. If you have any comments or questions, pop them down below or reach out to us on any of our social media channels. We'll be uploading a video every week, so make sure you subscribe so you can see those. You know what, Kim? That sounds like a plan. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. So that gives us a total of $538,450. And that's on initial purchase price of $530,000 home.